Today, I want to share with you the same food that nurtures vastly different lives. Some retired elders live a life like a poem or a painting, while others have become captives of procrastination, merely existing in a state of waiting for death. Some spend their days dozing off. Growing older is not a valid excuse for being despondent. Retirement is actually a departure from the workplace's cold winter, welcoming a new phase filled with warm spring sunlight. If you find yourself slipping into a state of despair, you may be bound by the following two major laws and must make adjustments and timely departures. 1. The Wild Horse Law, the Emotional Turmoil of Elderly Life Living each day as a man, the emotional disturbances of retired elders are the root cause of my inability to live each day well. In the distant African grasslands, wild horses are often bitten by parasitic bats. Though the bats are small, the wild horses cannot shake them off, leading some to be tortured to death. Some blame the bats for harming the horses, claiming they are too greedy. However, zoologists reveal another truth, the bats' damage is minimal. The fatal factor for the wild horses is actually their frantic running after an emotional outburst. This is the wild horse law. For retired elders, continuously breeding negative emotions leads to internal consumption, causing their originally happy lives to float away. I recall a news story about a young man on a bus who was scolded to tears by an elder for not giving up his seat. On bus route 142 in Chansha, after an elder boarded, he insisted that a young man give up his seat. The young man, perhaps having difficulties or other reasons, chose to refuse. The elder immediately launched into an insult, berating him for not letting him sit, questioning his upbringing, and using a series of unbearable words. Such uncivil language not only displeased other passengers, but some even approached to advise the elder, who became even angrier, scolding the good Samaritan. Some netizens analyzed that, although giving up one's seat is a moral duty, it is not legally required, and one can choose to give it up only if the other party deserves respect. In fact, we often encounter some elders on public transportation who may forcefully sit on young people or occupy seats, and some retired elders always like to crowd into buses during rush hours, then complain about the cramped conditions. However, if we think carefully, we will notice an interesting phenomenon. These elders can scold loudly, pull on others, bang on seats, and even change buses. So, is it really necessary to specially give up our seats for them? Does a healthy elder still require emotional health? Otherwise, they risk becoming unwell, losing control of their emotions, experiencing moral decay, and having a spiritually lost sense of self. Stable emotions are the best health regimen for the elderly. Only by maintaining good emotions can one see truly beautiful scenery and view everything as if bathed in the spring breeze, and the world will be equally gentle. Just like a scenic area that may originally be colorful, if you are always fixated on the ground, listening to noise, and walking in anger, then the scenic area will no longer be beautiful. Perhaps even the motivation to visit will diminish. Similarly, a family can become better because of the elder. However, if the elder is filled with complaints every day, the young may distance themselves, and the family may face collapse. In a collective, even if everyone gets along harmoniously, just one elder's constant anger can affect the overall atmosphere and lead to disunity. For instance, if everyone is gathered together to play mahjong and you suddenly flip the table, it will be the worst day. Once the elderly start to be troubled by emotions, happiness will diminish and eventually disappear. Living should be filled with meaning, but uncontrolled emotions can make everything seem bland. 2. The slide law, one cannot stop on a slide. When a person sits on a slide, their body glides down the slope and cannot stop midway, they can only slide all the way down. Joyful children quickly slide down and eagerly climb back up to slide again, enjoying themselves endlessly. On the other hand, pessimistic people always try to grab the edge of the slide, attempting to halt their descent. This is the slide effect. For retired elders, life moves downwards and backwards. Happiness can be found if they are willing to take a step back, otherwise, happiness will be lost. An extreme minimalist writes about clearing away your cash. Resetting oneself at appropriate times will allow one to pursue excellence continuously. 
After resetting, one can win new achievements. Climbing uphill is easy, but sliding downhill is hard. In our lives, we have to compete in the workplace, enhance our economic standing, and strive for social status and reputation, but as we age, we should let go of everything. Some elders are unwilling to resign themselves to retirement and continue to chase money and fame, re-entering the workplace. When elders are crushed by newcomers in the workplace and face discrimination, complaints begin again. Even more troubling, some retired elders repeatedly invest, only to see it all go down the drain, plunging their lives into a trough. Online, someone asked how to calm down after their father's investment failures and face reality. The questioner stated that his father invested everywhere, blindly trusting others, resulting in the loss of savings and accruing significant debt. He was originally going to study abroad, but now everything has turned to ashes. The family moved into a very small rental house, and more importantly, he lacked the ability to support the whole family, falling into confusion. It is very clear that an elder's investment failure affects not only their own life, but also the lives of their children. We must understand the principle that a father's debt is repaid by the son. Elders should not be overly self-righteous, still thinking of themselves as young people, as this could harm the younger generation. Not every elder possesses the ability to achieve greatness late in life. After retirement, one should go with the flow, learn to slide down, and land safely. From a family perspective, when an elder slides down the slide, they are actually making room for the younger generation to climb up. This is the wisdom of yielding. When people walk away, tea cools down, why bother leaving warmth behind? Imagine a cup of cold tea that becomes warm again when hot water is added, the taste also becomes bland. Instead of this, it's better to pour it out. What truly needs a restart is freedom, not a struggle. Employment and reemployment must adapt to changing circumstances. Difficulties always have solutions. When retired elders find themselves trapped in the above two laws, with a little thought, they can easily avoid them. First, learn to live a leisurely life, adjust your mindset, and avoid sensitive points that provoke emotions. For instance, avoid traveling during peak traffic hours to ensure a seat is available. Consider riding as a fitness opportunity and greet young people with a smile to increase your chances of getting a seat. Second, cultivate some beneficial hobbies like fishing, reading, singing, and dancing. Plan life reasonably, maintain simplicity, and neither let yourself become idle nor be troubled by career and wealth. Age is not the only mark. Quality of life is far more important. Living a high-quality life means every day is valuable. Living a mediocre life means sharing better content with everyone. Liking is the best support for us. Thank you all for your attention. Today, I want to share something with middle-aged women. It's important to understand that not all occasions are suitable for you to attend. Sometimes, when others hypocritically invite you out to eat and drink, it may seem like they are trying to cheer you up and strengthen your relationships, but more often, it is a setup that leads you not only to suffer losses, but also to endure unspeakable hardships. For middle-aged women, happiness is hard to come by. Don't be tempted by others' small favors, as it could ruin your own life. Things tend to group together by kind, and people cluster by their type. A high-level woman possesses grace and wisdom, has life goals, and her social circle will not be lacking. She knows self-respect and self-love, while a low-level woman does not value herself or put in effort, always looking to gain from others, unaware that there are no free lunches in this world. High-level middle-aged women understand to stay away from these three occasions to maintain their dignity. It is only low-level women who frequently attend and think nothing of it. 1. Class reunions without genuine friendship. There's a saying, it's better to hold a class reunion than to break apart pairs. Although this saying isn't always true, it reflects how class reunions are increasingly devoid of true feelings. Many classmates get together just to compare wealth and status or even rekindle connections with first loves, leading to disgraceful outcomes that may break up families. Middle-aged women should realize that not all classmates are as pure as they were in school. Many have changed due to societal influences and are no longer as simple as you might think. 
Everyone gathers to drink, chat, sing, and socialize, but ultimately, women often end up with guilt, and the outcomes are usually not good. Moreover, among female classmates, they often compare husbands and family wealth, competing over who leads a more glamorous life or who thrives in more prosperous cities. Some who have divorced become unrecognizable, with an indifferent attitude that leaves no room for genuine camaraderie. Together, they may not resonate well, leading to feelings of embarrassment. Class reunions are better held in moderation. If there are truly good classmates, it's best to gather in small groups to catch up or bring along your husband and children, treating it as a family gathering. We often hear stories of someone becoming angry and leaving abruptly, so why not avoid such occurrences altogether? 2. Outings with unfamiliar women Middle-aged women are often empathetic and have a friendly and gentle temperament, but this can easily lead to exploitation by malicious people. Some cunning women will exploit your kindness to have you pay for meals, leading you to spend excessively while they reap the benefits. Beware of those who might appear friendly initially, inviting you for dinner or drinks only to make you pay for everything. After the meal, they may forget to reciprocate or even ask you to treat them again. When you find yourself in this situation, they might act all polite in the beginning but would show their true colors afterward. If someone often takes advantage of your kindness and later dismisses it as just a casual thing, you should quickly withdraw. Good friendships are built on mutual respect, where both parties support each other without expecting something in return. There's no need to share the burden of relationships. 3. Gatherings of ex-partners and past relationships For middle-aged women, there's often a temptation to reconnect with past relationships, but this can open up a Pandora's box. Be careful of gatherings involving ex-partners or past loves, as they can lead to dangerous consequences and regretful outcomes. With age, women become wiser, and they understand more about their choices in love. However, if they are drawn back to the past out of nostalgia, they may forget their own moral standards and self-worth, putting themselves at risk.